Welcome to this edition of Video Drone by DIY3DTech.com. We've got the Hubson 502, yes, 502E out here on the Black River Spillway again. So we're going to do some quick flying. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and arm it. And then what we're going to do is we, we seem to be having a problem on one of the props here. Why isn't the front, front prop spinning? Let's try that again. All right, let's go ahead and get it up in the air hovering. We got seven satellites on this little guy. And so let's pull it forward. Yeah, it's chasing me. I get it the right way here. Bring it back over here, take it up a little bit. Notice one of the landing legs is a little bent on. I have to pop that back in. Just kind of doing a quick walk around, making sure everything's okay. I am going to start the video recording. I got a card in it. I want to take it up a little bit more. And let's take it out over the spillway. And uh, let's yaw it around this way a little bit so we take it into the spillway itself. And we'll take it around there. And we'll take it so we're going to fly it up the spillway a little bit. And I want to take it up a little bit. This thing is acting a little bit strange. We're going to take it down. That was that was a little bit strange, folks. So with that other truck over there, I want to make sure. So I brought it down hard in the grass. Be very careful when you approach these things, too. That's still alarmed. I'm not sure why it was acting up like that. Uh, looking at this. So let's give this another... Whoa. Let's go give this another quick shot and see what happens. There is something going on. I got a little bit of grass here in the propellers. That was a kind of a weird drift. It wasn't responding to the stick too much. Now there is a cell antenna over there. I haven't had a problem with this in the past. And again, I'm well, I'm down to six satellites. I think now I'm back to seven satellites. I need to get my glasses back on. Sorry for the adjustment. So let's go ahead. I think I might be having a motor problem here. Now one of the things that that I am going to do is I've got some uh, motors from Micromotor Warehouse. And I'm going to save that video off. I'm going to restart the video. So we have the crash video. So let's go ahead and put this in the air and see what happens with it again. I'm going to let it sit sit for a minute and see what happens. See what kind of drift I get. I did the cal compass dance with it. The compass calibration went good. But one of the things, you know, keep in mind, you know, you do run into problems with these guys, especially these littler ones, uh, and have problems like that where you have to ditch it and you have to, you know, be able to ditch it because, you know, I didn't want to hit that guy's truck over there and it was headed that direction. So, you know, that's why I downsticked it and took it into that grass, high grass over there. So I got a little bit of toilet bowling here. I've got eight satellites, so I'm not really sure why I've got this toilet bowl going on. Uh, let it sit in here for a minute or two. I'm going to restart. I think I got the video going already, so the video light seems to be blinking. So again, let's let's take it out a little bit. And uh, let's see where it... And again, we're seeing a little bit more toilet bowling. Look at it. See, see how it's mo moving around in circles? That is typically not a good thing. It should be hovering right in space. So I don't think I've got a good compass calibration on it. So this is sort of a good learning experience. So I want to make sure I'm getting this in the video. See how it's spinning around like, like water in a toilet bowl? So, uh, yeah, I'm kind of a little bit curious. Now, see, it's settling in a little bit. Um, but still a little bit of toilet bowling. I'm still at eight satellites. Usually, you know, once I hit seven, I'm pretty good. So, and I've flown here before, so there shouldn't be really any RFI. But notice how it settles in. And I think maybe this is one of the things I'm being a little bit anxious at getting it up in the air. So it's toilet bowling far less now, but it still has got a little bit going on. Uh, the wind is very today, so I'm going to take it up and 
I'll take it out a little bit. Notice that drift. Notice when I take it when I take it up and out the toilet bowling effect. So again, I'm going to take it out and notice that I'm pushing I'm pushing the my stick straight. So it should be going out straight. And I got a full full stick, but notice now when I release it how it how it's sort of circling. So I'm going to turn this back around. I want to get some video here in the spillway. And I want to take the copter out. And no, no, notice it how it's going now. See that? I'm gonna let it go. I, I did that on purpose, so something about that was not good, folks, and that's why I ditched it the last time. So I wanted you guys to see this. I might have broke some props on this, but again, I wanted you guys to see what happens when things go wrong. I gotta go pick up my grandson in ten minutes. Um, but this this is what happens when things go wrong. So I want to make sure I. I uh, Dearm it and always approach it with care. Pick it up from underneath. So I'm not sure what's happening with this little guy. We bought some uh, uh, we bought some sod here with this one. Have to clean this out. Wow. And, and again, I'm not too I'm not getting too picky here because the next thing for this guy is the bench and motor replacement and stuff. So the next time you see this, uh, won't be flying. It'll actually be uh, probably having the motors replaced. Uh, but I'm really not sure what's going on. I'm going to give it one more quick quick try uh, on this and see what happens. Uh, again, I, I think I would, in normal circumstances, I think I would try another compass calibration. I would reset this whole thing and try recalibrating the compass. I think something might be off with that motor. Now, something to be a big tip here. So there, there are accelerometers slash gyros inside these things. And what they do is these could never fly without that because they're what kind of keeps it level and kind of in a, in a tilt situation. And what happens if the motor's underperforming, it has to try to adjust that motor as well as the other motors to keep the copter in flight and level because the computer's goal is to relatively keep it level unless it's being commanded to do something, you know, like go forward or tilt or yaw. And, and if you have a motor going bad, this is something you'll see. And I think that's what's happening here is I think I have that one motor going bad, so it's kind of good that I'm um, doing that. Because notice notice when I activate it, the other ones don't spin up equally. And then when I hit the throttle, hit the throttle, I have it. Now, if I spin this guy up by hand, let me rearm this. See, I get that. So let's go ahead and take this guy back up. Yeah, it's having a hard time. I've got it full stick, and it's having a hard time. I don't want it to hit my car, so. Yeah, I think this one's going to have to go back to the workbench. Uh, she's having a bit of problems. It's, I guess, one of the mornings for problems. So it's just, I guess, good timing. So, uh, again, I hope you learned a few, a few good lessons about how to ditch it, why to ditch it, and all that kind of stuff. Um... And then also what to look for in the motors, a little bit how it works. I think, I think a lot of new folks uh, maybe miss the fact that as you have a motor going bad, it's going to have to try to recompensate for it of how this actually works. So, uh, And I'll talk about that a little bit more when I do the motor replacement on it. So hopefully you found this interesting. You'll learn something. And if you did, hey, subscribe to my channel. Also hit me up in the comments below, and we'll catch you in the next video. Cheers.